Well, good evening, church. Thank you for tuning in today to join us as we fellowship and worship together. We're still doing that in a virtual format. You know, 2020 has been quite the year. You know, I was looking at the calendar and realized that we're in the middle of December 2020. What happened to 2020? You know, it's it's gone by so quickly. We're living in unprecedented times, you know, with this global pandemic. But I believe that God has a plan and a purpose in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of the storm. He's up to something and he's up to something good in his body and even particularly in our body as well. And so, you know, as I was starting to, to reflect back on the year 2020 and look forward into 2021 for what God has for us and what he wants us to do specifically. I went back into archives and tried to look back at some of the messages that I had ministered over the year and try to pick out a few of my favorites or that I felt like would be good for us to uh, go back and revisit this week and just see what, what else we can get from the message. What else can God speak to us even right now during this time and season that we're in. And the, the series that I went back to is called Disruptive Jesus. How many of you remember that series back in February? Uh, this has been, it's been an exciting series for me. That's probably one of my favorite series that I've ever ministered because Jesus is not to be put in a box. He's not to be put in a building. He is totally against religion and systems that don't have anything to do with relationship with him. And so I really love that series and the message that I want to go back into the archive and pull out and share with you today is called Indignant Grace. You know, God is so gracious. God is not concerned about your performance, what you have done or what you have not done in order for you to be saved and, and gain salvation into the kingdom of heaven. God does want you to, to uh, operate like a disciple of Christ, to operate like a child of God and make him proud, but he doesn't require that in order to love you. His grace, his unmerited favor, he's indignant about it. And it just blessed me so much when I re recalled this message and reflected on it from earlier this year. So I just wanted to take this weekend to go back into the archive and play this message, and I pray that it's a blessing to you. I also want to encourage you and remind you that to Utilize our GiveLify giving app. It's because of you and your faithful tithes and offerings and your giving that we're able to continue these broadcasts and continue to get the word of God out there. We're doing great things. Uh, God has a plan and God is not finished. A pandemic can't shut God down. And so God's word is going to still continue to get out there, change lives, save souls. And it's because of your faithful and continued giving that we are able to continue to do that and fulfill our purpose. Amen. So GiveLify is our new app. I'll put that out there. That may be uh, something that you can use to give. It's very easy, two or three clicks, and you can give your monthly offering or your one-time giving, whatever you feel so led to do, to be a part of this minister ministry with us as, as we partner with each other to further the gospel of Christ. So without further ado, I want to dig into this series. Again, it's from the archive. It's called Indignant Grace from the Disruptive Jesus series, one of my favorite series I've ever done. And so I hope you enjoy it and be blessed. The next thing I want to talk to you about is Indignant Grace. Is he willing? Is he willing? Because like I said, we know that he's mighty. We know that he's able to do it, but will he do it? Think about this. This is so good. This is a picture. So I'm going to use Lourdes back there. So Lourdes is representing Jesus. Jesus is just out and about in the temple. He's not in the temple. He's now walking around. He's just out there. He's just out preaching a message. This guy that's got leprosy, he's been labeled with leprosy. He's been labeled unclean. He's unclean. He can't come to Jesus, but he heard about Jesus. He's heard about Jesus. He's seen Jesus. He's heard the messages. He's, seen, he's heard about the demons and the unclean spirits being casted out. But he is desperate. He hadn't touched his kids in a long time. They probably drop his food on the door and run away so they don't get contaminated with the leprosy. He's isolated. He's lonely. 
The religious leaders can't help him. They've only labeled him. They've rejected him, kicked him out. We've got to be very careful what we're doing in the body of Christ with unbelievers out in the world. We've got to bring them in. We can't label them and kick them out. So he's seeing Jesus. He heard about Jesus, but he can't get closer than 50 steps away from Jesus. Now everything is on the line. Everything is on the line. If he gets caught neck near people or near someone, they could stone him and kill him. But he knows this is my chance. This is my chance. I'm desperate. I can either sit in this condition with leprosy and die, or I can take my chance because I've seen him. I've seen the one that could change my situation. I've seen the one that can change my circumstances. This is why we need to see him. Because if you see him when you reach into your situation, now you could go get him. Yeah. See, before the law was in the middle of you and Jesus. It was a partition. That's why the, the curtain, the veil that was torn is about six feet wide, thick. It was torn from the top to bottom. That veil was stopping us, unclean people with leprosy, from getting to the Savior. But now he said, listen, I'm on my last rope. This is my last chance. Jesus is, Jesus is nearby. I've heard all of the things that he could do. I don't care about the rules and regulations. I don't care about what the, the Pharisees said. And I don't care about what these uh, oozes and bruises look like because I can see him. So he's taking that step. He's taking that step. Think about it. He, he's risking it. Listen, I believe that Jesus knew that morning that this guy was going to come. So as he was making his way, Jesus saw his face before he even woke up. It's Jesus seeing your face before you even wake up. See, Jesus was seeing his faith because Jesus had to protect him. Because if this guy walked through the crowd and everyone got leprosy, that wouldn't be good. So Jesus saw his faith from that morning. And he came up to Jesus. And he's got sores. He hadn't been touched in a long time. And he's coming up to Jesus and say, are you willing? The Bible actually says that he got down on his knee. He got down on his knee. The posture of his heart was, I don't care what the rules and regulations say. I don't care what the religious leaders say. I just know that you can make me well. I know that you can get me back to my family. I know that you can restore my marriage. I know that you can restore my relationships. But he just said, God, are you willing? And here's what grace says. Let's go back and look. Oh, this is good. So verse 40, 41 says, sorry, Lord, would you mind coming? I mean, Jesus, can you come back up front here? To <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. What if the hardship, what if the leprosy, the issue that you're facing in your life was designed to come into your life to bring you closer to Jesus? Mm. See, because there's certain things that we get comfortable in, and we don't want to change, and we don't want to let it go, because we're comfortable in our dysfunction. But what if he keeps pouring on the pressure to bring you closer to Jesus? See, the law was made to bring us to the end of ourselves, bring you to the end of the place where you feel like you can take care of everything for yourself. You can do everything yourself because you can't, because you're continuing to fail, and you're never getting the benefits of God because he finished the work 2,000 years ago. So what if the pressure that you're facing in your life is to bring you to the foot of Jesus? This guy shouldn't be in public. But he's taking the risk to come to the one that can disrupt things in his life and that can change things and that could give me a word that the doctors couldn't give me a word for. The doctors couldn't help me. The church couldn't help me. His legalistic religion couldn't help him. He had nothing to fall back on. He's isolated. The only thing he could see is Jesus. That's why we've got to be careful of what you're looking at. Because if you don't know what you're looking at, you can be stuck in your situation. So you've got to know what you're looking at. And you've got to don't worry about what failure you've had, what leprosy that you have. See, God isn't judging you anymore by your condition. He's judging you by Jesus Christ's condition. And Jesus Christ's condition is finished on the cross. Yo, the finished work is all wrapped up in the Christ. So even though you're unfaithful and you can't do what you're supposed to be doing and you can't read your Bible enough, you're in Christ. So when the enemy comes and convicts you and, and tells you that you're not worthy and you're good enough, you've got to point back to Christ. Right. 
So you got to know. That's why he says, as he is, so are you in this world. How is Jesus? If Jesus isn't broke, then you're not broke. If Jesus isn't sick, then you're not sick. If Jesus doesn't have any lack, then you don't have any lack. As he is, so are you in this world. But you got to believe that. You got to start to believe that. You can't believe that your goodness is based on your behavior and your performance anymore. So verse 41, he says, then Jesus, then Jesus, the Bible says that then Jesus was moved with compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion and he stretched out his hand and touched him. He touched him and said, I am willing. Ladies and gentlemen, he healed him emotionally. He hadn't been touched in years. He's been isolated from his family. Jesus didn't have to touch him. Jesus could have just said, you are healed. Go your way. But he touched him. This is grace. It's a dignant grace. He touched him. He didn't have to touch him. But he says, you've broken all of the rules. You shouldn't be within 50 feet of me. But you took the risk. You changed the way you were thinking. You changed the way how the system told you you couldn't come to God. You broke all the rules and the boundaries. You stopped, you stopped the religious cycles and going through the motion. And you got to the real God. You got to the power. You got to the source. And the source says, I'm not worried about what the rules and religion says. Because guess what? I wrote it. I wrote all of the rules and religion. And guess what? I fulfilled all of the rules and religion. So now that you're in me, I'm willing. I'm willing. And then Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. Let me show you all this. Thank you, Lord. So let me get you the next part of this. Splanizomai. Splanizomai. Yeah, say that real fast. <laughs> Splanizomai. What does that mean? To be moved with compassion from the inner bowels. So think about that. You've got this guy with leprosy. He's standing before Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus, anyone has got an NIV version of their Bible? Anyone here with an NIV? No? All right, I'm going to find it real quick. Let me just switch this version. All right, read for me verse 41. Mark 1, verse 41. Jesus was indignant. Stop right there. <laughs> Jesus was indignant. What does indignant mean? He was angry. Oh, Jesus. He was infuriated. He was upset. He was angry. Why? Why was he? The, this word, splamizomai, this means that Jesus from the inner, they thought that the inner being, the core, the bowels, the intestine represented the heart of who man was. And so this word, when it was translated, was translated, moved with passion, compassion, but that's a light version. That's a weak interpretation. It's a weak translation. The new NIV says he was indignant. Oh, Jesus. What Jesus was indignant about was that, listen, I never designed you to die. I never designed you to have leprosy. I never designed you to have sin. I came to take care of sin. I came to wipe away sin. So he was indignant. So grace was indignant. He was angry about the sin. Not that the guy did something wrong, but because of what Adam did, and he inherited this sin, he was indignant because he didn't design us to be that way. He didn't design you to have the struggles that you go through in your life. See, Jesus didn't design you to struggle with the addictions that you got. So he was indignant. He was angry because I didn't design my child to be like this. I didn't design them to have to struggle with this. See, we cast people away and judge them because they've got these issues. We label them. You're a prostitute. You're an alcoholic. You're a drug addict. We cast them out. But Jesus wants, them to, he wants us to bring them in. Because he never designed us to struggle. That's why he came indignantly 
to die. This is grace. Not amazing grace, but indignant grace. <laughs> oh, Lord. God loves you. God loves us. See, this God wasn't concerned and worried about the rituals and the rules and the regulations. He just wanted his creation to be well. He wants you to be well. He sent his best to die for you so that you can be well. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You remember when Moses was at the burning bush and God asked him, or he asked God, who are you? And God just says, I am. The great I am. We've heard that he is the vine. I am the bread of life. I am. He is whatever you need him to be. I love the way this guy with leprosy came up to him and says, are you willing? Jesus says, I am willing. Whatever you need him to be, whenever you need him to be, he is. It's a blank check of the I am, the great I am. He just, this guy with leprosy needed him to be willing, and so he was willing. God is good. Y'all look real tired. I'm just warming up, but I don't, know if, I, I don't know if to keep going or to stop or do. <laughs> wow. Are we that concerned for others in our lives? Are you deeply moved when you see someone hurting and struggling with something? Do we have a heart for God? Are we willing? Because ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ isn't coming back. When he comes back, he's coming to take us back. But right now, he's not here in a physical form. So he gave you his Holy Spirit so that you could have the power to do exactly what. So do you splenizo nai? What do you feel like when someone's hurting? Do you have like a deep yearning? to help somebody. <laughs> I'm going to end. This is the last one. Indignant grace replaces. I'm going to read verse 43 through 45 and close. And he strictly warned him. Listen to this. <laughs> this is so good. So Jesus strictly warns him because God has touched him now. He's healed him. And the Bible says that Jesus, I'm going to read in the NIV, this version. It says, Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. Verse 3, y'all with me? In it's important y'all look at the Bible because I'm not making this up and I don't want you to think that this isn't the Bible. Look in the Bible. Verse 43 says, Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell anyone this. What? That he healed him. He said, don't tell anybody. Why? He told him, don't tell anybody because his purpose is to come and die for sin. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to grasp the revelation of what Jesus Christ did for you when he removed sin. When he removed sin, he removed everything else that falls under sin. Sickness, disease, all of that other stuff is a subcategory of sin. He removed sin, the noun, out of the way to where you don't have to worry about it. Oh. See that you don't tell anybody about what I've done for you. Show yourself to the priest. You remember the priest that labeled him? He's saying, now go back to the priest and tell them you've been healed. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Oh, this is just a beautiful part. He says, however, he went out. And, to be, and began to proclaim freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer enter the city. 
ladies and gentlemen, when you had a full-blown interaction with Jesus Christ, you can't help but to talk. Have you talked to anybody about Jesus Christ when you went to the store? When you went to, when you went to work, did you tell Jesus about anybody? Did, did you tell anybody about Jesus? This guy was healed. He was made well. Jesus touched him. He couldn't stop talking about it. Is Jesus doing anything in our lives? See, because if he's doing something in your life, you can't help but to tell. And listen, they're not going to get it. When you go into the store, you go into Walmart and say, Jesus Christ saved me and he, 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 he delivered me from all of my sins. They go, praise the Lord, something's wrong with him. Let's go. <laughs> Tippy toe when you're walking around. But don't worry about that. Because when you know that he's been good to you, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter if people get it or don't get it. All you know that is you want to praise him. You want to exalt his name because it's personal. It's personal now. It's not the law. It's not the old way. It's a personal new way. It's intimate. You know him. The one that flung the universe into existence, you've got a relationship with him. You know him. And by the way, he's willing. He's willing to meet you wherever you are. Listen to this. This is good. <laughs> this is the last part. I promise I'm going to close. Oh, this is good. So this guy went out and spread the word of God. He told everyone about what Jesus had done for him. He blatantly disobeyed God. Mm. He blatantly disobeyed God. God didn't take his healing back from him. God didn't Go chase him down and rebuke him. I told you don't do this. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus went outside to deserted places. See, this leper was isolated, deserted, by himself, not touching anybody just by himself, isolated, alone. He meets Jesus. Jesus touches him, heals his body, and now he's among people again, and Jesus is isolated. Jesus Christ, he replaces our sinful nature, our isolation, our imperfections, even when we disobey him. He substitutes for our sin. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, He who knew no sin, he became sin, that you may be the righteousness of God. He replaced it. He disrupted it. He disrupted the religious system. He set you in motion to be victorious. He made you the righteousness of God. So if the enemy comes and tells you that you're not worthy and you're not good enough to be blessed of God because you didn't pay your tithes, you didn't come to church enough, you tell him he's a liar. You are the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Christ has substituted himself. See, Jesus substituted. He took all of your sin and on his body on the cross, when he said, finished, kula, tetelestai, it's done. All of your sin debt. All of your imperfections, all of your failures are all wrapped up into his body. And the judgment of God fired in on his body. He said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? So that he can love you. Come on. Indignant grace. It replaces imperfect man. So that we could be near God. It's more than amazing. It's radical. It's savage. It's rough. How much he loves you. Mm. This is the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. This is the gospel. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. 
Circumstances won't have the best of you. Issues and conditions, what people have labeled you won't have the best of you. It's what Jesus Christ said. He said he's got plans to prosper you. He's thought about you. He's got good things in store for you. And he is willing. <laughs> Stand to your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, he came a very long way from his comfort. It was uncomfortable for Jesus to come to this earth to save us and deliver us from our sin. He was a, he's, he's a king in a kingdom. He came down to rescue us so that we can go up and be with him. If the enemy has been speaking to your mind and discouraging you and we've got all of these viruses and stuff like that going around and fear, no fear. No fear. No evil thing shall come near your dwelling. And if it does, you cast it down in the name of Jesus because you've got the authority. You are the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Come on. Let's get fired up. We're disruptive. We're change agents. We don't have to go with emotion. We don't have to go with culture. We need to turn culture and change culture. Jesus Christ is dependent on us. He's dependent on us. You've got everything that you need. You've got all the weapons that you need. You've got all the protection that you need. You've got all of the authority that you need. Tried some time to preach this to you. Oh my God. God loves us so much. Whenever we're struggling, God is indignantly angry, mad, furiated, ballistic. Because that's not how He designed us to be and operate. You think you're upset and you're struggling? Jesus is upset way more than you could ever believe or think or feel or imagine. And the Bible says that we have a high priest that can relate to us. He's not just a person. He just didn't send these rules. He just didn't send someone to say, hey, you're the representative angel. You go die and be good. He sent himself. It's personal. He personally cares about each and every one of you. Your situation is specific and he cares. Just surrender to him. Just surrender to him. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for revelation of your word, Lord. Thank you for giving our eyes sight to see, Lord. Father, I pray that you let this seed grow deep, deep roots, Lord, so that we can know, your children can know who they are in Christ. They can know the authority that they have. They can know that you are willing, Lord. Your heart, your heart is willing. Your heart is willing. And Father, I just want you to let your love be shed abroad, Lord. Shed abroad in their hearts. Help them to know that you care, Lord. Help them to know that you care, Lord. And Father, right now we drop all of our walls. We just let them fall down. Father, we come with our hearts, Lord. We may not be kneeling physically, standing. We're standing, but our hearts are in a posture of kneeling, Lord because we know you're the great one. We know that you're mighty. We know that you're powerful. We know that you are willing. And Father, our hearts right now would just lay prostrate before you. Father, I pray that as the Holy Spirit combs these aisles, your children ask. They ask. Ask for your needs right now. Whatever you need, he is, I am. Whatever your needs are, he is the great I am. Whatever your needs are, he is the great I am. Just surrender. You've struggled too long. You've tried to do it by yourself. 
You've been going through the motion. Nothing's changing. Nothing's different. Just surrender right now. Just you and God. We don't, everybody doesn't have to come up to the altar. We don't have to lay hands on any, Just you and God right now. It's personal. The veil has been torn. You can have personal relationship with Jesus Christ right now. You can speak to him about your specific needs. The specificness of your life. The specificness of your heart right now. You can talk to him about it. He's there compassionate. The innermost being of his bowels, is they're yearning. You think you feel bad, but Jesus is yearning. He's Picture Jesus in the front of you right now. All of your needs, the great I am. Just let him know. Let him know the needs of your heart. Let him know the needs of your life. Talk to him. He's real. If you never talked to him before, just talk to him right now. Test him. He says to test him. Test him and try him in these things. Is he real? Test him and see. Test him and see. Try him and see. The best way to build your faith is to have your prayer answered right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, life isn't a game. The conditions and the labels that, that have happened, the circumstances, the situations, the, the hurt, the pain, the divorces, the, the messiness, the hardness of life, just let it all go. Let the unforgiveness go. Let the unforgiveness go. Let it all go. Cast it away. Just cast it away. Just let all of the walls down. Let all of the hurt down. Just let it go. Those people that have hurt you before, just let it go. Just cast it away. Just forget about it. He's there. He's bigger than those people. He's bigger than all of the needs. He's bigger than, he's bigger, he's bigger. He's standing right before you and asking you. You're asking him, is he willing? He's saying yes. Just release it. That unforgiveness is holding you back. He's here. He's willing. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. He wants to love you. He wants to turn your life around. He wants to change you. He wants you to be so excited and fired up by He wants you to be the one running out and going and telling somebody about what God has done for you. But you've got to lay those walls down. You've got to get desperate. You've got to come to the end of yourself. You've got to come to the end of your trying and your struggles and your uh, old way of doing things and the religious way that you had to do this prayer and you had to lay down and you had to cry this much times. He's saying, no, forget all the rules, forget all the regulations. He's walking past all of that. You just need to want him. You just got to get desperate for him. You just got to want him. You got to want him. You got to need, you want the source, the true source, the one that could touch you, the one that could change your life. He's here. He's near you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to save me, to die for my sins, and to make me the righteousness of God. You love me unconditionally in spite of all that I have done or not done. And I receive that in my heart right now. Bondage must go. Chains must be broken. Holy Spirit, come in. Come in. I surrender all of my work efforts, all of my religious efforts, and I just put it all at your feet, Jesus. Help me. Heal me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. God loves you. If you need prayer for anything, please hang around and our prayer team will be here to pray with you. Otherwise, don't we serve such an awesome God? Don't we serve such a, a risen Savior that wants to love us and care so greatly and deeply for us? You know, God isn't a religious system. God isn't a, rule, a, a list of rules of do's and don'ts. God is just indignant about loving us and loving us unconditionally. Beyond any mistakes we've made, beyond anything we have done or not done, he is just passionately driven to be gracious to us. Praise God. Well, you know, you may not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And if you don't, you know, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we believe that God the Father sent his best son 
Jesus Christ, grace and truth to die on the cross for us, not based on our performance, not based on anything we have done, our works, but just all by faith. If we receive him, if we believe that in our hearts, the Bible says that we would be saved. And if that's you, I want to pray a, a short and simple prayer with you. It goes like this. You can repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I've been separated from you. I've been separated from God, you the Father. And I just want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because he is the way, the one way, the only way, the truth, and the life. And I accept Jesus right now as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he is Lord and you, God, are my Father. And I believe, God, that you've got a purpose and a plan for my life. And I pray that you slowly and continually, day by day, as I seek you to reveal that purpose and plan for my life. It's in Jesus Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Child of God, as simple as that, by faith, you've received the Lord Jesus Christ. You are now a child of God. Praise God. All of heaven is celebrating because of that decision that you've made. And we are celebrating for you and we are excited for you as well. So if that's you, we'd like you to reach out to us. Um, let us help you as you disciple and you develop into the child of God that God wants you to be. You may not feel like anything has happened. You may not feel like anything is different. But child of God, you are born again. You've been renewed in your spirit. You are a new thing is what God says. And he loves you. Amen. Well, thank you all for tuning in again. Below on the screen would be our link to our Givelify. It's the way that you can give. We appreciate all of your faithful tithes and offerings and your giving into the ministry. It helps us to continue to bring the word of God out to the world. And it also helps us to reach the lost and get people's lives saved, their souls saved. And so we thank you for your faithful tithes and offerings and your giving. And we ask that you continue to do that. We're headed into a new and exciting season, and we need your continued uh, financial support in order to make that happen. So again, be blessed. Join us again next week. And until then, we love you and be blessed.